everyone. Welcome back to the program. I'm sitting here with Mark. Mark, thank you so much for being part of the program today. Yeah, thank you, Miguel. Pleasure to be here. Yes, sir. For those who are not familiar with the work you've been doing, let them know about yourself. Yeah, so I, I got into what I'll call the executive leadership development work. And I'm really specific with that language, kind of like you are with the way you describe yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I was the CEO of my family's business for about 10 years. I'd been there a total of 20 years. And then we went through bankruptcy back in 2009. On the back end of that, I was left with, you know, sort of a void in my life. I had hired my first executive leadership development coach for myself in 1999 and then maintained one for that entire decade. And I loved the work. You know, it's that sense of you know, looking beyond what it is that I know to find out what I don't know and stretching into those sort of um, gaps. So when we went through bankruptcy, I came on the other side and said, I know what I want to do. And I've been doing that more or less ever since. Talk about how important it is of having a mentor or a coach or that accountability partner. Yeah. It's, so I love coaching in general. So I'm in musical theater and we have a director and we have a music director and a choreographer who helps everyone come together and work at their highest version of themselves on the stage. I also coach high school rugby. I've been doing that now for 15 years, been coaching youth rugby for 20 years. And then in business, it's that same sense. I mean, why would we apply coaching as a principle and as a practice in so many areas of life and not have it as an active part of what we do every day to grow ourselves, to grow our organizations, to grow the people in our organization? So to me, it's it's as um, basic as eating and sleeping and you know drinking water. <laughs> it seems like everyone everyone benefits. I don't know a single person who's never not benefited from having a coach or a mentor. We talk about oftentimes individuals don't do something. It's because of either A, not having that accountability partner or the fact that they have fear that paralyzes them. But you seem to have an interesting th take with what is our relationship with fear, how we should actually embrace fear. Talk a little bit about embracing fear. Well, I mean, I think, you know, you and I both have that sense of awareness that Fear is this paralyzing force, and the way around or through fear is through action. So most times people encounter fear, and they do, which is what's natural, which is they withdraw, they shut down, they avoid, they pretend, they do all those things. You know, the way into and through and beyond fear is to see it, name it. First of all, decide whether the thing that I'm afraid of is actually true. Most of the time, it's not. It's imagined. Once you name it and can see it, then defining or identifying the actions that can help you overcome and move beyond that sort of, I, I always refer to them as barriers, right? It's a barrier. And then, you know, you have the breakdown into the breakthrough. Yeah. For that individual that's listening, you know, you talk about that moment of going through bankruptcy, coming through the other side. That is a, a scary transition in life and a big one at that. But for that individual that right now is going through some transitions and doesn't quite know what to do next, what strategy could we provide them today? Yeah, I, I love that question. I also had four kids, two mortgages, and was up to, you know, like a sliver of air, it felt like every day, just enough to breathe and make it through the next day. And I, I'd say that the thing that I had, A, was a support system, right? So I think, you know, asking for help. And being open to receiving help and support. people. Some people don't like the word help. They like support as opposed to help. But regardless of how you put language on that activity, building yourself and putting people, you know, we're not in this alone. That's one. Second one is to just wake up and break down the enormity of what seems insurmountable in front of you into small, bite-sized, I call them next actions. Mm -hmm. Like I see this huge thing. I can't tackle that huge thing, but what I can do is take the very next step or the next action that moves me either to or towards a place where I'm back in control. You know, I'll put that in air quotes, seemingly in control, but I'm moving myself forward one activity, one action at a time. And, you know, the honesty is that sometimes that fear is massive and is like a wet blanket on top of all those tools and skills that you have. And 
And and then so you wake up the next day and you you know count your blessings. You have another day to wake up into, and you get busy and back at it. At the start of the year, there's so much optimism, and many individuals set forth New Year's resolutions. Other individuals set forth one word, which anchors everything they do for the rest of the year. Where do you tend to lean towards, either New Year's resolutions or one word? Well, that's a great question again, and I think my whole experience. I found this book called Your Best Year Yet by a woman named Ginny Ditzler. Like, well, in 1999, my first coach gave it to me. And what I realized is that instead of having a New Year's resolution or a word, it's having a system Mm. that is repeatable and scalable and that I can return to every day. So I operate inside of a system that, you know, begins just because of the natural transition from one year to the next on January 1st. But then it's sustained. Like if you were to open up my Outlook calendar, you'd see it at the very top of daily practice. And that includes a handful of things that put me in a mindset to make that day the best day possible for me. And does it always happen that way? No, but more than not, it puts me in the frame and then it's really up to me. Mm -hmm. And so you have those systems that you implement every day. But if you had one word that would encompass your entire life's work, what would that one word be? Love. Period. Everything in my world, you're either moving towards love or you're moving towards fear. Mm -hmm. And that's the highest order of distinction. And so when all else fails, I think everything rests that's in the world of being good or as an owner of my life underneath that word, love. Awesome. For those who are connected and want to get connected with you, how could they do so? Yeah, so the easiest way is probably through email, which is my name, M-A-R-K, Mark at the letter M, the letter X, the number five, which I'm one of five siblings, and then consulting.com. So Mark at MX5consulting.com, or you could find me on LinkedIn. Uh, those are probably the two easiest. I have a website too. It's www.mx5consulting.com. Awesome. Mark, thank you so much for being part of the program. Neil, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.